Hi guys, this is Ashley back with another video. Before we get into the video, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on post notifications. So fans are speculating that Nicki Minaj's collaboration with Burner Boy is scrapped. Now, a few months ago, Nicki teased a new remix or collaboration. I think it was on Instagram Live. But unfortunately, the record never came out. <laughs> so let me know how y'all feel about that. Are you guys wanting this collaboration with Burner Boy or can you pass on it? I can pass. No shade of Burner Boy. Um, but, you know, it's not a collaboration that I'm dying for. In my opinion, okay? So if it never comes out, oh, effing well. You know what I'm saying? And if it do come out, it comes out. But, you know, I don't listen to a lot of Burner Boy's music. Now, if it was DeVito, I listen to DeVito a lot. Okay, no shade. But I think Nicki already got a collaboration with DeVito. So technically, we don't need another one. Now, moving on from that, Azalea Stinks calls out Nicki Minaj because she feels like Nicki Minaj is using Sexy Red. She said, I'm sorry, I would have have loved the remix to be Botch and Bitter. We got to be realistic here. It's the music industry and not about music friends. Not sure if Cardi will forgive Nicki for how extra she was. Like, did everything in the world except rap. But Nikki, you ain't fooling nobody with these weak females you're trying to make yourself look like you're a nice person with. And you're laughing at Asian doll was really a dub. This was some ugly colorist BS because Asian doll looks way better than you, which is a complete lie. I mean, come on. Azalea Stanks, we got to come a little bit better with the comebacks because some of the stuff you're saying is unrealistic. Her songs are harder, and I'm starting to notice how much the industry really hurt the girls' feelings and how coochie rap niggas are really G'd up, okay? Then Azalea Stinks also said, Nikki looks so stupid on that stage with all those unicorn rap girls and sexy look like she's stinking this photo. I can't even tell if it's her. You really accuse Cardi of having... The herps, okay? But this chick who admitted to having the Gano. And we know you don't even like Foxy. Like, she had the chicken, Ganya, too, and it's your idol. Yikes. Okay, so Azalea Stinks went in on Nicki Minaj. Here's my thing. Um... I think it's actually the polar opposite. I don't think Nikki wants to work with Botch and Bitter. I think Botch and Bitter wants to work with Nicki Minaj. Okay? Who needs who right now? Who is flopping after having four singles not stick on the charts? Whose album just went number one? Who has two to three singles on the Hot 100? Nicki Minaj. Okay? Who is on a sold out war tour and who can barely sell out tickets? Is Azalea Stanks on planet Earth? I mean, come on. We're witnessing the downfall of Botch and Bitter, but you want Nicki Minaj to save Botch and Bitter's career. That's what it looks like. It looks like people want Nicki Minaj to save Botch and Bitter's career because she's flopping. That's what it looks like to me. And I don't think Nicki Minaj is using Sexy Red. Okay, Sexy Red is hot. You just said there's no friends in the music industry Okay, so why does it matter if Nicki Minaj really likes Sexy Red if there shouldn't be friends in the industry, if it should be business? So you contradicted yourself. Azalea Stanks, focus on your flopping career and less on Nicki Minaj. Okay, you're the one that needs the most help. Not only that, fans are accusing Champagne Thickums of sabotaging um, Nicki Minaj because he dropped his diss record uh, with Kung Fu Kenny, and he dropped another freestyle. We're going to get into that later. But he dropped the disc record about Kung Fu Kenny on streaming platforms before he just leaked it, but now it's officially on streaming platforms, which I thought was stupid. 
Now, some people are saying he's sabotaging the chart obsessed races. Well, it definitely did not fucking work. Okay? Champagne Thickums is receiving Donkey of the Day today. Okay? Um, I'm giving Donkey of the Day out to him a little bit later. And at the end of the day, um, it didn't work. She's still topping the charts. And as for Nicki Minaj, I keep saying Champagne Thickums is not your friend. It made no sense for him to drop a freestyle that was already out yesterday. I think he believes that dropping the freestyle um, on streaming platforms is going to make Kung Fu Kenny respond faster. And it's not. You're wasting your time. Let Kung Fu Kenny come when he's ready. You took three weeks. Moving on to Doja Badu. It has been rumored that Doja Cat allegedly will be on the Boy Is Mine remix, okay, with um, Queen Ari. Let me know how y'all feel about that. Now, The Boy Is Mine was a fan favorite on Eternal Sunshine, but unfortunately, Ariana never made it into a single. But allegedly, The Boy Is My Remix will be the next single off the album, which to me will be very fire. Now, um, Dolja Cat and Ariana already have two collaborations they did in the past. One was on Planet Her. I forgot the name of it, but it flopped. And then um, it was the 69 remix. I think it was called 69 with Megan Thee Stallion. Um, I think that went top five. Okay, so, you know, I can see this going number one for Doja and Queen Ari, at least top five. And I think this would be a good look for Doja Cat, especially since, you know, the Barbs and the Kitty Litters decided not to support um, the Scarlet Deluxe album, which flopped. You know, she only did 400 in per sales, which honestly is just embarrassing. And I think that um, with this remix from Queen Ari, um, you know, the next time she drop an album, she'll do more in per sales. I think the next time, you know, Doja Cat drops an album, and if, you know, she fixes her image and go back to the planet her era, she can do at least 100,000 total, maybe not in per sales, but 100,000 total first week, okay? I think she can do that for the next album if she fix her image and get back in the good graces of the barbs. Boy, oh boy, Botch and Bitter is getting exposed yet again. It has been revealed that Botch and Bitter's ticket sales um, for the EBT Experience show are not selling. Okay, and she is the headliner for this year's EBT experience. Now, she was begging on social media to have Section 8 gang go purchase some tickets. She was begging yesterday. And so, um, somebody has sent me this. It looks like a lot of her um, tickets for the EBT experience are not selling out. You know, it's a lot of blue marks. I was actually kind of shocked because I'm like, she got you know, a few stars that are performing with her. You know, she got Gunna. Y'all don't want to see Gunna? Y'all don't want to see Sexy Red? DeVito is also performing. He's not really that big in the U.S., but I'm shocked that the headliner, Botch and Bitter, cannot sell out, you know, the EBT experience because she got a Grammy and five number ones. So I was just really honestly shocked by this. Fans are also blaming you know, inflation, okay, you know, prices are high for everything. And on top of that, you know, Nicki Minaj is on tour. The Chart Obsessed Races just was on tour. Champagne Thickums was just on tour. So people are spending their money elsewhere. Um, If I was botching bitter, I would lower the ticket sales. I think they were like, you know, $59 is the lowest and 100 and something dollars is the highest. I would lower them to $20. And then give them out for free, like at your local food bank or something. I think that would be a good idea. If she give them out for free, like they did with the Summer Jam tickets, that would be fire. You know, that way people don't have to pay to see Botch and Bitter because who would pay to see somebody that's flopping? You know, you only pay to see superstars. Now, moving on to Scratch Off, Ice Spice was on the Shop podcast. And basically, it was revealed that Ed Sheeran was dissing Scratch Off. Take a listen. We're looking forward to meeting. Did you? I met Ed Sheeran. 
Okay. And oh. I was really excited because I've been a fan of him since I was like 14. Um, and when I met him, he was like, she ain't even the fart, by the way. And I was like, oh shit, period. <laughs> Damn, so Ice Spice is cool with the chart obsessed races and Ed Sheeran? Scratch off, you gotta get up off the floor. I don't care what anybody says. Everybody knows that Ice Spice was dissing Scratch Off in that song. I'm sure Ed Sheeran got social media. And it looks like um, Ed Sheeran, nor is the chart obsessed races, are remaining neutral in this beat, which is very interesting. In my opinion, Scratch Off got to align herself with the big dogs. She was in the club with Merry Men. Kevin Hart and Usher, but the Chart Obsessed Races is a bigger star. Now, the Chart Obsessed Races mediocre album clocks Queen B by a landslide. I didn't know she was pulling numbers like this, but then again, I'm not a huge Chart Obsessed Races fan. Um, you know, I just don't get into her music. But the Chart Obsessed Races new album, The Tortured Poets Department, is to debut at number one on the Paola Board 200 album chart. With a minimum of 2 million units in its opening week, according to Hits Daily Double. I'm like, goodness gracious, Queen Bee can't even do a mill. This ain't good for Queen Bee. I mean, goodness gracious, she can't even do a milli first week. The chart of such races can't be beat and her music is mediocre. And it has gotten a lot of mixed reviews, okay? No shade, like Queen Bee has gotten better reviews than the chart of such races. NME stated in their review that Swift seems to be in a tireless pursuit for stardom. Yet the negative public opinion it can come with irks her and is a tired theme now plaguing her discography, leaving little room for poignant lyrical observations she excels at. It's why the pitfalls that mirror her 11th studio album are all of more disappointing. She's proven time and time again she can do better. To a Melbourne audience of her era's tour, the Chart Obsessed Races said that the Torture Poets Department came from a need to write. It's just that maybe we did not need to hear it. Ouch, damn. Now, Pace Magazine also gave a negative review to the Chart Obsessed Races. They said, Fortnite chokes on the vomit of her own opaqueness. I took the miracle move on drug. The effects were temporary. Swift muses and sounds like satire. This is your songwriter of the century. Open the schools. Damn. They said that she cannot write for ish. I think compared to Beyonce, the Chart Obsessed Races is just boring when it comes to her music, but she's Caucasian. So she's always going to do better numbers than Queen Bee because she just has that Caucasian conservative fan base that's always going to support her and they don't like Queen Bee. All the racist people do support the Chart Obsessed Races, no shade. And I believe Queen Bee wants that fan base and that's why she's doing country and her next album is rock because she wants that conservative white racist fan base that the chart obsessed racist has. She wants that fan base and she probably won't ever get it because she's black. So she just needs to hang it up. You're not ever going to do a Millie first week and you may not win album of the year, but at least she tried. Now I'm going to have to give Rolling Stone donkey of the day because they said that the chart obsessed racist the Torture Poets Department is better than Adele. Sit the fuck down. Lyrically and vocally, the chart obsessed racist will never be better than Adele. Never in her life. Stop it. Okay? I think we got to stop pushing the narrative that the chart obsessed racist is better than everybody. She's not. She's a blah, plain white girl that has gotten ran through by several people in the industry. And she just writes about it. Okay, Adele and Queen Bee can find other topics to talk about other than getting ran through because at the end of the day, their coaching ain't loose. You know, Adele and Queen Bee are both married and they don't sleep around. So, of course, they're not going to talk about every man that they slept with. Y'all need to stop giving the chart obsessed races too much credit. Y'all need to stop that. She's not better than Adele or Queen Bee. Sit down. Now, moving on from that, there is a rumor going around that Kung Fu Kenny 
will be releasing an album in May, and that's when he will respond to Champagne Thickums. Now, this information is coming from Rory and Maul, um, their podcast, and allegedly they got wind that Kung Fu Kenny is coming to respond to Champagne Thickums, but not right away. Let me know how y'all feel about that. Now, I feel like Champagne Thickums, he took three weeks to respond. Okay, so I think that Kung Fu Kenny is allowed to take three weeks to respond to Champagne Thickums and his BBL. I mean, I don't understand why it has to be like within the next week or so when Champagne Thickums had to have his ghostwriter come back with a really good response. Moving on to Champagne Thickums. Champagne Thickums, you are receiving Donkey of the Day, you dumbass. Why the hell? Are you releasing a freestyle with an AI, Snoop Dogg, and Tupac? Are you dumb? Are you that stupid? Leave Tupac alone. He would not even respect you. You don't even write your own raps. You beige botch BBL loser. I could not believe he had the audacity to use Tupac in his freestyle. You don't have no real niggas that want to be on a song with you. Everybody done clicked up on you, so you had to bring up somebody from the dead. That don't make no fucking sense what you did. You're an idiot, and you're receiving donkey of the fucking month, you you moron. It made no sense to bring Tupac into it. Like, what does he have to do? Because he's from the West Coast? And if I was Snoop Dogg, I would sue your bitch ass. That was stupid. Now, the beef continue. Chris Breezy, the colorist, drops another diss track to Quavo called The Weakest Link. He said, Don't let this R&B ish fool you. N-words get ripped to shreds. Quavo talking like he a thug. Nigga, you a B-word in dreads. Can't wait to see the day that you back up all the ish you said. What's all that boss ish you talking? You ain't no huncho, nigga. You the weakest link out of your clique. Let's keep it a hundo, nigga. You effed my ex ho. That's cool. He talking about Karuchi. I don't give no F, little nigga, because I effed your ex when you were still with her. They said revenge is sweet. Now they think about that ish. Don't let that line go over your head. I might just sing about that ish. I had her feeling about this D. There is something sweet about that ish. Okay, so a lot of fans are speculating that he's talking about Sweetie. Because you got to read between the lines. He said, revenge is sweet. Sweet tea. Then he said, I got some tea up on that B word. I ain't going to speak about that ish. I ain't playing chess with a checker player. I'm a ticking bomb on a detonator. I'm shitting on niggas. I'm a definator. I put a Migo on a ventilator. Stop talking about beating girls. You beating bitches in the elevator. Now, Chris Breezy the Colorist, no. You can't compare it to you beating Rihanna Black and Blue, okay? He snatched a bag out of Sweetie's hand. When they were in the elevator, you beat up Rihanna, Frank Ocean, Usher. You got a restraining order. From Karuchi, you cannot compare your history of violence to Quavo. Stop. Please don't do that. He said, Fashion Week, they sat me next to your lame ass. I was truly mad. All I kept thinking about was breaking your face, but I gave you a pass. You lucky I ain't want to F the money up. Boy, I would have broke you in half. Quit trying to be tough. You ain't like that. Why you keep showing off? Quit talking about drugs. You the only pack that I've been smoking on. Then Chris Breezy goes for the juggler. He said, RIP takeoff. He the only real one. I got true respect. Crazy how when he died, everybody really wished it was you instead. Damn. <laughs> Wait. Oh, Lord. He going for the juggler. He said, you tripping. Chris, don't say that. Don't lose your head. You done turned the big bad wolf on. These F niggas never knew revenge. This is what happens when an F nigga push a real nigga out to the edge. He said, this is what happens when a dumb nigga get fame and it gets to his head. You gonna kiss this ring? F you from my middle finger, I tacked to my trigger finger. 
Spring roll beef to your dinner table. My mental state ain't ever stable. Well, that's facts. We know you never in a stable condition. I know the ish gonna sting. I'll run your ass through the ringer. You just got bodied by a singing nigga. You kind of copy Champagne Thickums with the last line. I think he had a similar line with Back to Back. But overall, Chris Breezy the Colorist, he ate you up, Quavo. I'm sorry. He ate you up. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to give Sweet Tea and her loose coochie donkey of the day. Sweetie, why the hell are you smashing all these niggas? I mean, it makes no sense. You have bad coochie management. Okay? Bad coochie management. You're flopping and you're getting ran through. You worse than Megan Thee Stallion. At least Megan, when she drops a song, it can end up on the charts. You don't even make bumbling under for you to be getting ran through by Chris Brown and Little Baby. YG, um, Justin Combs, Key Powers, Michael B. Jordan, and nobody could write you a fucking hit. Okay, at least with Megan Thee Stallion, she sleep with producers for beats and she somewhat ends up on the charts and she gets these brand deals from sleeping around. But you, you do all the same things Megan Thee Stallion does, yet you can't chart. Your career is in the gutter and you giving up that coochie donkey of the day to Sweetie for bad coochie management. Okay, you're supposed to sleep your way to the top, not the bottom. You're sleeping with YG the colorist and he damn sure can't help your career. And then she has the audacity to say, oh, let me go rewrite these Nani verses. That's the problem right there. You have no talent talking about writing. You can't write a hit to save your life. What you need to do is keep your legs closed. Getting ran through is not cute for somebody with no talent. You and Carisha are both um, neck to neck. I mean, you guys both mess with the Combs family. And Justin is all up in them lawsuits, okay? What you need to do is find an active fire ghostwriter. And I think that you and Quavo should just do a song together to try to take down, um, you know, Chris Breeze of the Colorist. But I don't think you can. That just record was too hard. And now... You're going to be the punchline because you couldn't give that coochie a rest. But anyway, it is just getting so messy. Oh, my goodness. Can we go back to 2023? Why 2024 so messy? Goodness gracious. But anyway, I got some hot tea on Patreon, especially on the people that are really sabotaging Nicki Minaj. Link will be in the description and have a great day.